Welcome every back everybody. Last week, Punxsutawney Phil predicted an early spring on Groundhog Day, and it may have you thinking about getting out in the garden. Well, John Fesh is here. I think it does, because a lot of people have sent in questions, and you, you're kind of bringing us a taste of spring here. I am, and, and you know, it's going to be Valentine's Day. Yes. And so I just thought that, you know, a lot of people like to have another option besides, there's nothing wrong with, you there's know, long stem the, cut no, flowers. No. Those are always appreciated. But it's nice to have, especially if you work in a cubicle, something like this. Uh, you're still talking about potted roses, mm -hmm. and these are potted daffodils. They're, I love daffodils. And these are a special cultivar called te, uh, te, which I think is French, Okay. which uh, <laughs> uh, means okay. they're only going to get that tall, yes. which is really cool in the landscape to have something small. Th these would grow outdoors. You could save them and put them outdoors or just enjoy them in your cubby. I love it. And you need something bright this time of year for sure. Now everybody's got cabin fever and you got to have something a little bit on the exciting side. And these will last, I don't know, three, four weeks or so. Perfect. Yeah, okay, well, we've got cool. a lot of questions, so we're going to get to them. Let's do it. Okay, uh, Mark says, I have a row of spirea bushes next to a driveway that have become completely buried by heavy snowfalls. Um, will these pop back up in the spring? You know, spirea should be just fine, and a lot of the other shrubs. The only ones I would be worried about would be those that are brand new, really newly planted. And, of course, all that material is going to have slush with it, and the slush is going to be there because of the salt. Oh, okay. That's the big thing. And so if it, if it doesn't go away... After, you know, a couple of weeks here, it might be nice to try to get some of it off. Although that might be kind of a hard thing with the ice. Okay, he has part two. Speaking of which, should All we right. try to pull the snow off his evergreens and other bushes? Generally not, because no? once it gets on that woody material, it can make that a lot more brittle and likely to break. So if you can live with it, if it's a plant that's been there for a while, if it's a tree that's been there a while and just bending those stems down, they'll move their way back up when it comes to be April and May. Just let it be. Leave them, leave them alone. Connie says, when should I put on dormant fruit tree spray? This would be a good time to actually do that once we get into a little bit warmer weather, maybe in early March around that time. So keep it right here. Listen to the meteorologist here on WWT. Yes. And when we get temperatures like in the 40s, that would be a good day to put that on and make sure that that'll do a good job of controlling aphids and some of our scale insects be a good application at that time. Should she prune before or after? I would prune and then put on the dormant oil spray and do that mid-March would be a real good time for that. Okay, we've got like 20 seconds. Yeah. Mike says, I have a redbud tree that's about 15 years old. The bark is starting to peel off. Is that normal? It pretty much is. And as they get a little bit older, the bark is exfoliating and it starts to peel off just a little bit. We see the same thing with several other plants. There's a lace bark pine. Mm -hmm. So even silver maple will do that. So it's just a sign of getting a little bit older, a little bit of maturity. All right, Jen, do we have time for one more? Did you say no? Okay, no, we do not. John Fash, we had one more question. We'll get to it next time, we promise. Sounds good. Thank you as always. You're so popular. Yeah, it's good to be here. All right.